Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's the weekly Thursday webinar coming to you live from the Seattle area. It's 10 a.m. on the West Coast, 1 p.m. on the East Coast, and late afternoon, early evening over in Europe. So thank you for the uh, our attending, our, attending our session today. Um, I'll talk more about that in a minute, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, so first of all, upcoming events and activities, we have the Office 365 Nation Workshop Tour that's doing doing great is next week, a week from today, down in Southern California and Irvine. Now here's the deal. The seating is limited. At this venue in particular, we have to cap it at 100. Got just a couple of seats left, so jump on that. We're hoping people from as far north as Bakerfield all the way down through uh, San Diego will consider attending this. Um, very well received, and you can find out more at o365nation.com and click on events in the upper right. So I'll make mention of that a little bit later on. Uh, the fall conference saved the date, um, October 1 through 3. Uh, we have a huge planning meeting tomorrow concerning that. We're looking at adding a full pre-day um, for Win 10. So just a FYI, it will certainly be Office 365, but the timings and the rumors coming out of Redmond suggest that early October, when everybody gets back from fishing um, in August, would be a fantastic time to do a deep dive on Win 10. Be sure to use the chat feature uh, for uh, asking questions for the webinar. Um, again, I'm Harry Brelsford from SMB Nation, and I'll be acting as the MC and ask the questions as we go of our guest um, over at uh, App River. So let's let's talk about that. Uh, App River has a hot hand in the industry right now. Um, the spoils go to the victor. They got in early in the 365 conversation. That's consistent with the conversation we're trying to have with you is this is the essentially the early days of small business server. And you can you, you can really do a land grab and, and enjoy success by virtue of getting it early, and I would offer App River is, is displaying some of that behavior. So we'll talk more with them about that. Uh, with no further ado, um, one of the smartest guys in the channel I know, Scott, are you there? <laughs> and and I, I'm, uh, I'm being facetious, uh, but I'm what not. What do I say now? <laughs> hey, Harry. Hey, where are you coming from today, Scott? Where, where, where are you located? Uh, so I'm talking to you guys from App River headquarters in Gulf Breeze, Florida, uh, which is up in the Panhandle in the Central Time Zone, uh, on a barrier island uh, just offshore from Pensacola. And are you getting hit with the polar vortex, or is Florida? Kind we of are. It was. Uh, it oh, was, you are. <laughs> it was freezing. It was 32 degrees this morning and yesterday morning. Um, we have plenty of sunshine, so it's been warming up, but. We had a group of visitors from uh, Redmond, from Bellevue, actually, uh, in last week. And uh, uh, the morning after they arrived, it was 20 degrees warmer in Seattle than it was here. So we are definitely uh, know, feeling it. It's, uh, well, we're not here to talk about climate change. So no. We're here to talk about build it, sell it, price it, and make money on it. Let's, let's rock. So maybe that is a little bit of a climate change. I don't know. I'll leave it up to the audience to decide. But uh, thanks for the introduction, <laughs> Harry. Um, for anybody who's heard this talk before, and there might be a few, um, I apologize. This presentation hasn't changed a whole lot. But um, we we know for a fact there's still an awful lot of managed service providers and IT pros and others out there um, that uh, probably would appreciate hearing this message. So. Um, you price it, you sell it, you bill it is is something that I'll unpack a little bit more, uh, actually quite a bit more later. Um, but what I want to talk to you about in general is the ways that we've learned over the last three and a half years since we launched as a syndication partner, uh, the ways in which partners like you drive customer satisfaction. Um, in the beginning, it was an experiment for everyone, us, for Microsoft, for you guys. Um, since then, there have been uh, the usual uh, panoply of, of uh, partner programs coming out of Redmond, um, some of which uh, landed more successfully than others. Uh, but today, we have lots of data. And that data tells us that IT professionals like you 
are the engines that drive customer satisfaction around Office 365 for what we refer to as the SMB. And when I say the SMB, I'm talking about um, anywhere from five users on up to, uh, I'll say, 10,000. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. You will hear a little bit about who App River is. Um, we are enjoying some uh, a surge in brand recognition recently, but that hasn't always been the case. So I want to introduce you to the company real quickly um, and then tell you why uh, we have a different message than other strategic partners in the O365 space uh, today. So we were established back in 2002. Um, I mentioned I'm talking to you from our HQ in uh, Gulf Breeze. We also have a European subsidiary called App River AG, headquartered uh, outside Zurich in Switzerland. We actually have about 230 employees now. Uh, we add about 15 or 16 new appers every five or six weeks here lately. Um, and uh, we have always been uh, cloud. We were born in the cloud. We've never shipped a device or rolled a truck. Um, and our focus has always been around email and security, uh, or more generally messaging and security, and has come to include collaboration and productivity from the cloud over the last several years with the uh, advent of Office 365. AppRiver as a company supports almost 50,000 business customers in, in more than 40 countries today. Um, we protect or manage or touch in one way or the other about 8.5 million um, online mailboxes uh, around the world. And uh, we enjoy a very high uh, customer satisfaction um, score, if you will. We did net promoter score for a long time. We are, we're not doing it these days because uh, the numbers kind of settled in at, at a nice high level and they stayed there and it wasn't particularly remarkable after a while. But um, when it comes to Office 365, I think we're adding about 350 to 400 new customers uh, per month or per four week period. Um, and across all of our services, which encompass uh, I believe about nine or ten different cloud services these days. Um, we bring almost a thousand new customers a month onto our uh, platforms in one way or another. Uh, so I mentioned we are relentlessly focused on small and mid-sized companies. Uh, that's where um, the most elbow room is. That's where we run into folks like Microsoft the least. Um, and that's where we feel like we can do the most good for the partners that serve those businesses. AppRiver is channel-centric, has been from the beginning. Um, the majority of all of our new customer acquisition comes from our channel partners. We have about 2,000 of them worldwide. Um, and we add a net of about uh, three to 400 new ones every year these days. So those are the vitals. Uh, this is a pretty slide to look at. I've been to several of these offices, but not all of them. Um, but it makes us look bigger than we are. Again, 230 people means that in the eyes of the federal government, we're a small business just like you guys and the customers we serve. And there's an awful lot we like about that. Uh, it's, it's much um, much more natural and I think maybe even credible to say that you serve the SMB when you are one yourself. Um, hey, Barcelona's, Barcelona's looking pretty good to me. I'm going to use the same look here. <laughs> I'm looking. At, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go find your job openings, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I visited that office in the fall, and uh, and it's small, <laughs> and the doorknob yeah. to the office is in the middle of the door instead of on the edge of the door, in perfect European style. But um, hey, great, yeah, great work if you can find it. But, yeah, us, but it's, it's going really well. Yeah, let me tell um, you. Okay, please continue. So uh, real quick from the brag wall, um, the Stevie Awards, which we uh, have now been notified we won again in 2014 or for 2014 and expect to um, garner one again for 2015. And the International Service Excellence Award, Service Excellence Award that we received in 2009, those are really the, uh, the ones that mean the most to us. 
um, they are independent and in in the case of both of those uh, app river is evaluated without our knowledge over a long period of time by um, by deeply committed researchers who are focused not on IT and not on cool technology um, or or awesome partner programs but are, are really just focused on uh, the customer experience and customer service aspects of what we do. And I want to tell you guys, we're going to talk a lot about Office 365 today and what AppRiver does around that. But to be perfectly clear, the product that we put out there every day is the customer experience. The product that we deliver through our partners is the customer experience. And that's really what we're most passionate about. Um, exchange in the cloud is exchange in the cloud. Not a whole lot new there, um, and, and when it is new, it's created uh, there in Redmond. But what's keenly differentiated uh, across all of cloud services, and especially in the 0365 space, is companies who invest heavily in the customer experience and companies who do not. And I'm here to talk to you as a member of the former group today. So. I mentioned SMB. This slide is kind of grayed out. This includes some brands that most of you guys would recognize, at least a few in there that are AppRiver customers. But uh, again, to, to be true to our core, uh, the customers that we were really built to serve and that we think about and, and work for every day um, through our partners and directly are you know, people like Central Lawn Sprinklers and uh, global executive jet maintenance and total plumbing and maintenance services. These are, you know, today uh, our average hosted services customer has 17 users. So hopefully that gives you a picture of who we are, uh, more or less. Um, this is a slide that represents why we are. We are uh, that thing. We are that SMB specialist because, as I said, uh, you know, the, the, the data is that 98% of all the businesses in the United States have fewer than 100 computers in them. Um, and companies like Microsoft and, and uh, very large companies are not the vehicles by which that 98% of the business population out there gets served. Or not population, but 98% of businesses. Um, they get served by people like you and by uh, technology providers and service delivery engines like AppRiver. So uh, we have branded that commitment to the customer experience that I've been talking about. We call it phenomenal care. That really goes back to a little bit of a ripoff that we did of Rackspace. Um, you guys may be familiar with Rackspace as a company. Um, we were their largest customer for a number of years. Um, since they went public and signed up EA Sports, we're no longer in the number one spot. But we kind of grew up with Rackspace. Um, and back in the day, they, they branded a phrase called fanatical support. And they built a lot of their differentiation in the data center services space around their support experience. And that spoke uh, volumes to us here at AppRiver in our early days. And by the time I got here as employee number 88, Phenomenal Care was already a, a deeply embedded cultural value. Um, and it is now at the core and has been for, for many years of everything we do. Um, so our application mall, if you will, uh, again, it consists these days of uh, eight. Uh, I believe there's one service that is not represented here. That's DNS Plus. Apologize for that. Um, but uh, we, our, our vision and, and the idea behind App River as a brand and the reference to a river is a, is a steady flow of high value, security first, productivity and messaging solutions for business um, coming out of our organization, flowing through partners like you to small businesses and uh, wrapped in uh, some front end tools and a uh, and a level of competency and expertise uh, that's difficult to find it elsewhere. And we try to do all of that underneath very simplified billing structures. Um, there's not an item in our billing system for professional services. We figure that 
that's your bailiwick, that's what you do. Um, we hear over and over again from our partners that uh, how much they appreciate the fact that we just deliver great support and valuable products under ultra simple billing terms and then let them go off and run their businesses and in turn help their customers run their businesses. So got, specifically, go ahead, Harry. Yeah, yeah, a couple questions on that uh, marketplace. Um, what I'm not seeing and I'm not hearing is that you're, you're, you're not necessarily a store like, you know, I mean, quite frankly, you might see at the Apple Store with thousands of apps and Android mm -hmm. and Windows Phone. I'm, I'm not seeing that. What you're offering seems to be more sort of infrastructure related. Is, is that fair? Like, I'm not, I'm not seeing a CRM offering or a time and billing offering. Is, is that not yeah. what, what you do? You know, that... It, you know it is. I, I, I think rather than infrastructure, we, we think of it in terms of, we use the term core. Um, okay. Core, core services are the services. So if you imagine a, uh, an organization with 50 employees um, and a small in-house IT team, maybe two people, um, those two people will always have uh, a list of things to take care of and do that includes um, core services like email, things that you need just to turn the lights on every day. And then they'll include things that are specific to the business, line of business applications, uh, development projects, enabling mobile workers, securing work product, um, those sorts of things. And where we are, where we have positioned ourselves and where I think partners get the most value from us is in our ability to deliver solutions that free up constrained IT teams uh, to work on uh, the things that are, are more tailored to individual businesses and leave the um, commoditized, I need it up 99.999% of the time you know, I'm going to turn the lights on. I'm going to open up my email. It, it needs to be there. I don't need to waste a lot of time with spam. We think of those things as core, and that's where we planted our flag. And we love it okay. when, when that competency allows our partners and our customers to go off and do cool things with billing systems and, um, and uh, customer collaboration tools and automation and the other things that you were mentioning. Okay. Second question, very specifically, can I use Skykick, the migration tool, uh, in conjunction with your offering to migrate my um, exchange data up to up to its future home? You sure can. I remember the first time I met the folks from Skykick. I think it was almost it was probably three years ago, and they were in beta at the time, and we've watched them grow their product and expand its capabilities mm -hmm. and engage with partners and it's been very exciting to watch. I think they're one of the coolest uh, new technologies to spring up around Office 365. Uh, we call them enabling technologies and uh, we are definitely uh, passionate about software assisted migrations. We've been using them for many years. We don't use Skykick ourselves. Um, but when partners engage with us who are also partnered with Skykick, we know that we're setting up to work with a partner who knows what they're doing, who goes out and finds the best available tools, and who really is serious about, um, about bringing expertise to the onboarding process. And that's a wonderful thing um, that is not present for customers who try to go work directly with Microsoft. Very cool. Let's continue. Okay, um, so you know, again, we were we were there from the beginning in that slide uh, that's up on the screen behind Steve Ballmer back in uh, June of 2011. Very small up there on the top line. You can see our logo. These were the original syndication partners. This was the group of companies that Microsoft tapped to bring Office 365 to customers that were too small for them to mess with. Which, again, fortunately for all of us is most of the world. A um, number of different types of companies here. You'll see some telecom brands, people like Telefonica and British Telecom and Bell Canada. 
um, and you'll see some other uh, types. Uh, Jack Henry is one. Um, and uh, three and a half years on, most of these, uh, many of these uh, original syndicators are no longer part of the program. They may have either failed to launch or reconsidered or went in another direction or what have you. But uh, today, from this original group, uh, it's just App River and Intercall. Um, this list has been filled out with other um, syndication partners um, who have had varying degrees of success. And now we're all getting ready as part of the Microsoft ecosystem, if you will, to uh, begin to understand the um, heir apparent to syndication, which is called Cloud Solution Provider, or CSP, coming out from Microsoft. Probably we'll all spend most of this year, this 2015, learning what CSP is and what it might mean to our businesses. App River is now technically also a CSP, um, uh, but that's a, that was a, an administrative task that we had to take care of. We still transact with Microsoft around Office 365 as a syndication partner. And what that means is we buy Office 365 licensing that runs in Microsoft data centers. We buy it from Microsoft at a wholesale rate and then we turn around and sell it to our direct customers at a retail rate that we set. And uniquely in the United States, we also offer it to our partners at a wholesale rate that we set. And uh, it's that latter bit that uh, we're going to focus on today. So, you know, our, our legacy um, coming into syndication was that we were one of the four or five largest exchange hosters in the U.S. other than Microsoft uh, at the time. We are today one of the three largest, I believe. Um, we have more than a quarter of a million seats of exchange under management ourselves running on our own platform. And um, that business gave us a chance to collect data and establish standards for a healthy um, hosted service practice. Um, what, the way we define healthy are some of the numbers you're looking at here. So a conversion rate from leads to active trials of 80%. At the end of those free trial experiences, a conversion rate to paying clients of 88%. Um, activations referring to actual live use of the, of the service where we can see mail flowing um, in the case of hosted exchange, 98%. Um, and then a, an ongoing year-over-year -year customer retention rate of 95%. So these are the kinds of numbers that I spend most of my time looking at and, and assessing as we launch other services uh, to determine that, that we're, we're continuing to respect phenomenal care, that our assumptions about trying to wrap phenomenal care about some, around some new technology were, were correct. So we made that bet. It was a big bet for us back in 2011. And today, what we can see uh, for Office 365 in comparison are some very happy numbers. 78% lead to trial conversion rate, 92% trial to paid service, 94% service activation, and an 86% uh, two-year retention rate. So, um, I, I'm here today to tell you guys that everything that we hoped we would be able to accomplish with the um, syndication business rules that were made available to us have come to pass. Um, we haven't, we didn't make any big assumptions back then that turned out to be wrong. And that means that we've been able to build on that success and, and now we can really talk to partners about deep engagement around services that are delivered by App River, but that run in Microsoft data centers. And that was a weird concept back in 2011. So I wanted to paint that picture of, of the how we got to where we are today. Where are we today? 65% uh, of our total new Office 365 uh, customers, um, I'm sorry, 65% of our total new clients uh, come from channel partners like you, and 50% of all of our revenue comes from those accounts that, that you guys manage through us. Um, 
We, as I said before, over 5,000 Office 365 clients active today on our tenancy. And uh, about, as of yesterday, about 94,000 end users um, encompassed by those 5,200 customers or so. So we have mass, we have volume, we now have a voice at Microsoft, as Harry alluded to, um, that carries uh, enough weight that we can take your priorities and your requests and your needs and your complaints about Office 365 and actually go back to Redmond and help make it better. Change it in fundamental, um, I don't want to say profound, but in, in sort of basic ways that, that recognize um, and uplift the ability of companies like AppRiver and partners like you guys to take this Microsoft technology that has so much value and power in it and make it our own and take it out there to our customers and create the customer experiences that we want and not the ones that Microsoft designs. So fundamentally this is about differentiation, but it's not an obvious topic, right? Because we're talking about differentiating around a product that is the same at the data center and technical level as it is for everybody else on the planet. Um, so prior to um, the end of 2013, our partners were only allowed to transact with us on Office 365 as referral agents. We sent them a commission check and we billed their customers and supported their customers directly. That was by contract with Microsoft. We spent all of 2014 building a business case to convince Microsoft that that set of business rules was not conducive to uh, real productivity in our channel and that they were missing a huge opportunity by not allowing us to take their products and their wholesale rates and turn around and create offerings for our partners that were meaningful. They finally agreed at the end of 2014 uh, to give us a shot to prove that what we were saying was right. And then we turned to our partners and said, okay, it's time to make us look good. <laughs> and uh, fortunately, that's exactly what happened. So prior to what we call two-tiered distribution, which is this business rule change that allows AppRiver to package and price O365 for its partners, who can then in turn uh, package and price to their customers the way they want. Um, Prior to that, uh, only about uh, a little more than 10% of our partners worldwide were doing anything with us as agents around Office 365. We finished a quiet internal pilot um, in the third quarter of 2014, and at that point we had about 350 um, partners transacting. And then today, this data is actually a little bit old, we have more than 800 partners who are engaged with us either as referral or reseller partners under this two-tier arrangement. Um, we weren't even allowed to talk about two-tier publicly until October of 2014. Um, so it's not new in the sense that we've been doing this for a year and a half, uh, but it may be new to you because we were covered by a non-disclosure agreement for a full probably 10 months um, as we, as we watched the numbers and, and showed Microsoft that what we told them was going to happen would actually happen. So right, this, gotta, go ahead, Harry. Well, you got to love it. I, nothing brings me greater joy than telling Microsoft <laughs> 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 exactly that. So right on. Um, hey, yeah. got a question. Sure. Um, and, and by the way, folks, we're at the bottom of the hours, so be sure to use the chat feature to answer, um, ask your questions, and we'll try to answer them. So here we go. A little, a little bit lengthy, but it amounts to this. Uh, what's the behind-the-curtain security products? Which vendor, AV, spam, malware, encryption, open source, Linux stuff, Sophos, Trend Micro, et cetera? Yeah, those kind of like listening to Howard Dean roll off the Democratic primary. <laughs> no way. Um, <laughs> So, uh, Kristen wants to know what's what's going on behind the behind the curtain with uh, security. Okay, okay, behind the curtain. So, first of all, let me tell you that, and I'll acknowledge that a lot of this is kind of uh, marketing-ish on the front end. 
But Microsoft recognized early on with Office 365 that they had a real competitive advantage against their number one nemesis, which is uh, Google, um, when it came to security and privacy. And they got so excited about how different O365 was than Google Apps in those regards that they created a, a uh, web property called the Office 365 Trust Center. And the Trust Center today is a place where you can go and you can read a lot of you know, general statements about how, how trustworthy computing and um, independently verified standards and all these other things are in place in Office 365, encryption of data at rest, encryption, that's using BitLocker technology, by the way, encryption of data in flight. It goes on and on. There are literally millions of words of, of very detailed and general information about what Microsoft wants you to know about the security and stability and privacy that they've baked into Office 365. As far as what goes into the spam and malware protection in Exchange Online, which is the email component of Office 365, um, generally speaking, uh, Microsoft doesn't publish a lot of granular detail there, but I can tell you the story. There was a product called FrontBridge um, that Harry remembers, I'm sure, um, back in the day. And Microsoft bought that company. FrontBridge was a, was a fully realized email filter that was optimized for exchange. Um, and Microsoft bought that company and that technology. Uh, they morphed it a little bit into a product called Forefront, which uh, protected mailboxes in BPOS and, and uh, was also available as a standalone product. Um, and then became Forefront Online Protection for Exchange in Office 365. And that's still the core of the malware and spam protection that Microsoft delivers with the email components in Office 365. I didn't catch all of the question, but you named a number of different vendors there. I was trying to pick up on. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, it, it was a, it was a speed and feed to the entire <laughs> industry. So AVG, Trend, you know, you name it. I didn't see semantics. So, but I, 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 I think you know, keep it at a high level. It's just it's more. Yeah. Uh, what 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 are you really doing with the security, and how are you doing it? That's really what the individual has. Yeah, and 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 so uh, you know, I would say that Microsoft does uh, takes a multi layered approach to security just like we do and just like all other responsible large multi-tenant hosters. Um, that means that wherever there's a threat vector, you're standing up gauntlets that involve all of the best tools that you can get your hands on, uh, reputation and, um, and other types of engines that help you score and, and rate threats. Uh, nowhere in all of that at Microsoft in Office 365 do I believe that there are products that are broadly available uh, from other companies? So when you mentioned Symantec, is it possible that Microsoft is consuming a specific threat feed that is actually published by um, part of the Symantec organization? Sure, it's possible, but you're not going to hear about it from Microsoft. The protection technology throughout is is Microsoft technology unless they say otherwise. And I mentioned one example of that, the encryption at rest technology is actually delivered by BitLocker. I can tell you that the global uh, WAN optimization technology that Microsoft uses to secure the speed and reliability of their cloud services for users all over the planet is provided by two companies. One is Akamai and one is Riverbed. Um, so it's not that there are no examples of other people's technology that you can find named as being part of Office 365, but it's not a lot. Microsoft has invested a lot in their own stuff, and I think it's fair to say that they also don't have a big interest in sharing the spotlight with a bunch of other vendors. This, this is their product, um, you know, much like Google did with Postini. Google went out and bought Postini, which was a great standalone product. Today, there really is no such thing anymore as Postini. My, Google took it, made it their own, baked it into their email products, and now that's where that technology lives. So I don't know how I did with that question. It's an awesome 
awesome oh, question. But visit the trust like, center and and yeah, uh, they like meat on them bones. So uh, <laughs> no problem. We have engineers here who who can go deeper with you. There you go. So what's behind the uh, the heightened partner engagement that we experienced after two tier? Well, here's what happened to actual seats and customers. Prior to two tier, you can see over here the first five bars on this chart were prior to two tiered distribution being allowed. Then the pilot of two tier in December and January and February um, of 13 and 14 there. And then there's the hockey stick event. We go right on up to now, uh, if you saw October of 2014 on this list, you would see that that, um, that orange bar extended above the 8,000 line. So uh, again, this is what we told Microsoft would happen. If they took the handcuffs off and just let us go do what we do with our partners in the SMB space, everybody was going to be happy, and it turned out that that was the case. So happy to be able to show you that and also point out that this average seats per account of around 17 has been rock steady for as long as we've been measuring it since probably early 2012. You know, you and I have had a uh, conversation. So uh, FYI, folks, uh, Scott's on tour with us for the uh, Office 365 Nation workshop tour. Um, again, if you join us late, you can still join us in Southern Cal next Thursday. Go to 0365nation.com and click on events, and we also hit the other NFL city. So, but Scott, we've had this talk because this is very interesting that uh, in, in, in the small business server era, worldwide, we averaged about 15 seats. Um, you're a little bit higher than that. That doesn't surprise me, but you know, you're, you're firmly fixed in uh, SMB. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's, it's just interesting. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if there's well, drop in it. You know, my, my boss, the CEO of, of AppRiver, he told me something a while ago that's always stuck with me, and he heard it from somebody else, but it goes something like this. If you want to be a member of the masses, serve the elite. If, if you want to be a member of the elite, serve the masses. <laughs> and it's certainly been our experience that, uh, that the engine that's powered our growth over the last 12 years um, has been the, the 20 user law office, the dentist office, the yeah. insurance agency, lawn care service, dry cleaners the businesses that make this economy go at the end of the day. Um, and you know what else, Harry? They're passionate advocates if you, can, if you can amaze them. If you can wow them, if you can exceed their expectations, they will stick with you forever and they will tell everyone they know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we saw uh, that. I, I, I'm not seeing you message uh, the onesies, so I'm not seeing you um, you know, quite frankly, the postcard I get from CenturyLink or, or, or uh -huh. so on. I'm not, I'm not seeing the one. Not may, maybe that you wouldn't do a onesie, but I'm not, I'm not seeing that as your core messaging. Is that fair? It is. You know, historically, we've always had low monthly minimums that that recognize that you know we can't do phenomenal care and we can't keep our engine running um, if. If you know we're we're sending out invoices every month for four bucks and eight bucks and you know ten dollars, um, but something interesting happened with Office 365, and that was we knew from the beginning that in syndication our biggest competitor would be Microsoft themselves, and we looked at, at how they were selling and recognized that they welcomed single user business accounts. Um, so we went back and forth. We had a little bit of a sort of crisis of confidence, if you will, here. And we actually launched with uh, a, per, a, a user minimum um, in Office 365, and then we scrapped it. And you know what? We sign up single user accounts all day, and it still hasn't moved the needle one bit on our average seat count. And there's something else really cool that happens with single user accounts in a growing economy, which thank goodness we are back in. And that is that they become five user accounts and they become 10 user accounts. 
and they need more services. And what was an uninteresting uh, new customer at sign up, perhaps even a little bit of a little bit of a troubling customer at sign up. Uh, if you just give them a little bit, what we find is that they become uh, five and ten years or uh, successful and growing small businesses who again they remember that you were there for them when they were one or two people and and uh, that's meant a lot so yeah we had an interesting journey with that minimum thing I'm glad you asked that because I think it's one of the great sort of underlying stories here is that that in the end when it came to minimums we held our nose and jumped and uh, we've never looked back and it's been great for us Hey, uh, le legitimate question. Um, we have an individual asking, are any plans to provide Link Enterprise Voice? So Link Enterprise Voice. We do not. It's a great question. Uh, we took a look at that space and realized that there were uh, there was a whole population of terrific looking Microsoft partners who had their own Link infrastructure and had mastery of that business. It involves some Billing complexities and some technical challenges that we weren't um, we weren't interested in taking up. Um, so we just decided that we would continue to take care of core, that's email, licensing health, subscription health, end user support, admin support. I can't connect my new iPhone to my uh, mailbox. Can you help me? That type of thing. And when it came to things like dynamic CRM and integrations with uh, other people's um, IP PBXs, things like Cisco Call Manager, um, and then the whole PSTN connectivity and enterprise voice thing. We just decided um, that we would let Pinpoint and, uh, and that partner community um, take care of that business. Um, we love to work with those guys. We like to coordinate with them to create that great customer experience, but we don't have any plans to get into that business ourselves. And our arms are wide open to partners who have practices that uh, that involve enterprise voice. Very cool. Hey, sanity check. We got about 15 minutes left, so we better rock and roar. Got it. So um, you guys own the customer experience when you are a partner of App Rivers. Uh, we're going to teach you everything we've learned in the last three and a half years about how to do expert O365 onboarding. Um, and migrations. Um, we're going to offer you our own brand of partner certification and training with sales and technical tracks. We're going to make sure that you benefit from 24-7 phenomenal care just like um, we hope that all of our customers do. Um, and we're going to provide you with a raft of compatible solutions that snap onto Office 365 and can make it more complete uh, more secure and more valuable to your customers and therefore to your practice as well. Um, what you know we, we we started our learning around Office 365 in the pre-sales phase. We learned how to do expert consultations and how to compress those conversations down into very sharp interactions with customers. Five or six questions is what we've found it takes to understand enough about what your customer has and needs and wants to go back to the 28 different service plans in Office 365 and pick one from column A and one from column B and create the ideal 0365 solution, one that you created because you have the knowledge and expertise with us behind you. And those tightly fitted uh, right-sized solutions for your customers are the ones that they buy and the ones that they keep and the ones that they upgrade later as they grow. So we've learned how to do that. We want to teach you how to do it. Uh, we want to continue to make sure that everything that we equip you with as a partner is flexible first and foremost because again, you know your customer, you know your market, you know your business. Um, we're always happy to be brought into your circle of trust, uh, but we don't want to try to think for you. So every time somebody says, we should do this, one of the first questions we ask is, yeah, but how would that affect partners? Would it limit their choices? Would it cramp their style? Would it get in their way? And as a syndication partner, I can tell you we've learned some great object lessons because 
sometimes we wish that Microsoft would do that where we're concerned. <laughs> uh, but anyway, more often than not, uh, it's the other way around. Um, vertical markets. want to say a quick word about the appeal. We talked of, about security in Office 365. That was a great question. How does that play out in the SMB space? Well, it means that industries that are highly concerned with security and regulatory compliance find Office 365 to be super attractive. It brings big boy compliance tools um, and uh, you know things like DLP and um, uh, auditing and centralized admin control and easy point and click configuration of complex systems to optimize them for things like HIPAA and FINRA. So you talk about insurance providers and, and agents, you talk about uh, legal and law firms, talking about health and healthcare IT, um, and you're talking about financial services and accounting. These are the primary for us. Now, admittedly, App River's messaging has always been security first, so maybe it's a chicken and the egg thing, but I can tell you that these are some of the most demanding customers when it comes to winning them over to the cloud. And Microsoft has given us great technical tools to meet their requirements and, and address their concerns and, in some cases, their fears. Um, and so it's emerged that, uh, that the, the industries that are most concerned with those things find uh, that they have the best set of tools um, in an SMB sort of package uh, probably that's available anywhere. It certainly is, in my opinion. So just expanding a little bit on ways that we can help you uh, add Office 365 to your practice, make money with it. I mentioned certification. Our learning management system offers very high quality, real world uh, best practices from our experience, um, optimized for sales pros and for support folks. Um, and for those of you who are both, <laughs> uh, and uh, we're getting ready to launch the level two versions of both of these training tracks. Um, and uh, we're very pleased by the response. More than uh, almost a thousand partner personnel have gone through our CBT uh, training and certification for Office 365 today. We also do this for a number of our other products like Cypher Post Pro and SecureServe, for instance. We have a partner resource center, which is in the process of being pulled into our uh, beautiful customer portal um, so that you can use role-based access control to go in as a partner of ours and see the right set of tools and optics for you as a partner. Um, our resource center is, you could consider it as a subset of what Microsoft puts out there, which is absolutely voluminous and can be time consuming to sift through. We collect a lot of data on what are the most popular knowledge base articles, the most frequently accessed. We bring the, the uh, most frequently used tools together in a much smaller library of stuff that you're much more likely to need on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, can you still go to TechNet and learn cool stuff at the margins about Office 365? Absolutely, we do it all the time. Um, the 0365 blogs, there's all a constant flow of, of interesting and valuable new information coming out of Redmond through those channels. But I want you guys to know that as an AppRiver partner, you've got a branded secure home on the web where you can go as a partner to take that fire hose of information coming out of Redmond and have it filtered a little bit by uh, the App River machine and then delivered to you in a way that uh, we think is um, a little bit more results oriented, a little bit more efficient and to the point. Um, I think our actual number of knowledge base articles is over 60 now. This slide's a little bit old. Um, I think we have more than 10 technical guides now. We've got how-to videos that you can expose in an unbranded way to your customers that do things like introduce them to Link, for instance, or SharePoint. Um, to be clear, we're not application training specialists. Um, we don't have a service 
um, around things like SharePoint implementation. Um, if you want to consume SharePoint as part of Office 365, um, we've got you covered on licensing and subscription health and onboarding and even migration. We even use um, software uh, assistance to make SharePoint migrations into Microsoft's cloud easy and fast. Um, but we, we look to our partner community to add value to their customers by um, bringing uh, end user training. You know, users that have never seen Link before might need a little quick orientation. How do you make a Link call? Do you have a headset? Um, is the Link client set up on your cell phone? Um, is it even compatible with your cell phone? Things like that. In all of these areas, we've got your back, and you'll find that we phenomenal care means it's very difficult to draw a line in the sand anywhere and say we don't support that. Um, but I'm trying to give you a sense that, that there's a lot of application level support, how-to stuff, adoption and training that's available to be done for the SMB that you guys can, can charge uh, attractive professional services fees to do. It's not hard stuff. We can get you pointed in the right direction. And uh, quite frankly, it's important uh, to identify all the valuable services that you can add around Microsoft product because at the core, Office 365 margins are not the kind that you and I are going to retire to Costa Rica on. Um, they're great for enabling other sales. They're great for meeting core requirements um, quickly and the high value and bringing customers in that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise. Um, but the real money is in professional services and add-ons uh, around, particularly we think, around security and compliance these days. Um, one more quick preview. Uh, I mentioned that we're in the process of bringing the partner pavilion tools into our CP. This is a screenshot of our customer portal. And uh, to this would be added a partner um, view. And you would see, you will see as soon as the uh, development team finishes their work, which will be this year, um, you'll see full Office 365 provisioning and service and user management controls in our CP. Um, we believe that that will be a great value add for our partners because Microsoft has not produced uh, an effective multi, uh, you know, um, multi-client management interface for its partners. Um, if you want to partner with Microsoft around Office 365, you're still basically um, administering and looking at and supporting clients one at a time uh, by logging into their interface using some sort of admin on behalf of type of stuff. So we're excited to be able to bring out real um, multi-tenant partner management tools, the kind that we know our partners want and need. And this is a sort of a preview screenshot of what we're working on. Um, Harry, that's really my last slide. I think we've got uh, four minutes till, and I can certainly take uh, another question or two if we've got it. Yeah, yeah, no, no problem. Uh, let, me, let me look here. OK, so I have a question on. Uh, are the trial customers just testing using company name dot on Microsoft online dot com domain? Awesome or are they question. actually moving their domain? It's an awesome question. You guys ready for a little bit of App River secret sauce? Um, okay. Our free trials are really onboarding disguised as free trials. So what we do at App River and what we encourage our partners to do, although you don't have to, is uh, that we, we have trial enabled every service plan in the Office 365 lineup. That frees you up to talk to your customer about what they would actually buy and then make that what their trial is, including a full mix of licenses and licenses for everyone in their company. And that's all free to you as a partner for 30 days. And then what, what works beautifully for us and is really the, this try-by experience is really where the magic happens in that, in that trial conversion rate that I mentioned earlier is that after about three or four days, maybe five business days tops, what we want to do and what we like to see partners do is start moving that customer towards a migration and an onboarding while it's still free. 
So point your MX records, let's get in there, let's get the migration with licenses or get the sky kick cranked up. And let's just kind of quietly get about the business of getting you on board. We can show you how to do these gentle phased migrations where it's not disruptive to the client and everybody just keeps coming in every day and working. And then lo and behold, next Tuesday, uh, the guy sitting next to me is on the new platform while I'm still on the old one. And that's where the magic happens. What, when, it, when it goes really well, then about two weeks into that 30-day trial, the customer's actually already migrated and fully onboarded, and they just enjoy the production service on their primary domain, free for another two weeks. And I'm talking about in our direct business. And then when we send them an invoice on day 31 for their first month, they don't they don't think twice about paying for it and they never ask us to switch them back ever because it's a great experience for them and all the things they were afraid of in terms of disruption and and things breaking and upheaval and cost they all just kind of melted away and and we kind of you know assume the sale so that's what works great for us partners are are empowered and equipped to do that when they work with us and um, I don't like to tell that story broadly because I'm always a little bit afraid that somebody bigger will copy it. But I think I know down in my heart that uh, somebody like Microsoft never would. So it's a yeah. cool thing. I'm really glad that question came up. Very cool. Uh, folks, uh, we're at the top of the hour, and the deck is clear. So, Scott, um, always a pleasure. Great audience yep. today. And some, Thank some you. Serious questions. So you'll be receiving, as always, folks, a follow-up uh, thank you email from us and some additional materials. Um, be sure to keep App River top of mind. And more importantly, you can meet Scott and join us next Thursday, a week from now, down in Irvine, California, in Southern California, at the 0365 Nation workshop tour. Go to 0365nation.com for more information. And Scott, any final words? I mean, it's right there on the screen on uh, some basic contact information. And, uh, I don't know. Why don't you take us out? <laughs> just, I just want to thank you for the opportunity. Thank everybody for being here. I think we had uh, more than 80 people registered, uh, and I know you guys are busy. So thank you very much. I hope I get to meet uh, some of you out there on tour um, and talk some more about uh, ways that we can help you incorporate Microsoft's technology in your practice. Very cool. All right. Thanks, Scott. Folks, have a great day. And we'll Cheers. Talk Thank you. Bye-bye.